Hey class, Mrs. Anderson here. This video goes with week seven. Remember, we didn't have any assignments for week six. So you're probably gonna see a week five video and then a week seven video. There was no video for week six. So this one's between May 11th and May 17th. And we're focusing on the Y-intercept. So first, the Y-intercept is the um, point where the line intersects the x and y axis or the y axis my pen is dead so just give me a second here so I'll write that down for you it's the point where the line intersects the y axis So here's a couple examples. So remember the X axis is the horizontal axis and the Y is the vertical axis. So this point right here is the Y intercept. That's the point zero, negative two. So we'd say the Y intercept and we use B as a variable to identify the Y intercept is negative two. And B, the line intersects the y-axis right at the origin, 0, 0, so our y-intercept is 0. Horizontal line intersects the uh, y-axis at 0, negative 2, so the y-intercept is at negative 2. And this is a vertical line which means it's gonna go on forever. It runs parallel to the y-axis, so there is none. There is no y-intercept for that line. And this one also has a slope that's undefined, if you remember that. So notice these points. Um, they're all where it's zero comma something. So when identifying the y-intercept, it's always um, zero something y. So it's on the y-axis. So if you're looking for the y-intercept in the table, you need to find where the x is 0. And then the y-intercept is the pair that goes with that 0. So the y-intercept in this one would be negative 7. That means that the line would cross at 0, negative 7 down here. In B, I don't have any x's that are 0, but if I continue this table, it looks like we're adding 1 every time on the left side. So if I continue, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. And then the pattern on the right seems to be out adding 1 as well. So 4, 5, and 6, and then that gives me my y-intercept at positive 6, which is... Um, 0, 6 would be up here, negative 1, 5, so your line would cross something like that. Okay, so we're looking for when x equals 0. So it looks like we have to go backwards again. Um, I'm going to go from the bottom up. It looks like I'm subtracting 1, so then I can go 2, 1, 0. Then the pattern over here looks like it's subtracting 3 every time. So 11 minus 3 is 8, and 8 minus 3 is 5. So then when my x is 0, my y is 5, so your y-intercept is 5. All right, now we're going to identify the um, y-intercept from an equation. And we've talked about slope so far, and we've talked about y-intercept. We really haven't talked about them too much together, and that's going to be the focus for next week. But the equation for a line in slope-intercept form, which we'll focus more on next week, is y equals mx plus b, where the number being added at the end is our y-intercept. Or it's when you plug in 0 for x. Remember, it was always 0 comma y. So if you plug in 0 for x, you will see that y equals 0 minus 2. 
So y equals negative 2. So your y-intercept is negative 2. If you plug in 0 for x here, you're going to see your y-intercept is 13. So you can see it's the part that's being added to the end of the equation. Now here, there's nothing at the end being added. That could be the same thing as just plus 0, so the y-intercept is 0. This f of x is the same thing as y equals 5 7 x. If you plugged in 0 for x, 5 7 times 0, y equals 0. So your y-intercept for that equation is 0. In D, we have a negative 9 at the end. Your y-intercept is negative 9. These ones are two special cases, so we have to remember um, this is a vertical line. X equals negative 3. We'll just take a quick sketch of that. Uh, x-axis is the horizontal axis. Negative 3 is 3 to the left of the origin. So this would be a vertical line that looks like this, which means that's parallel to the y-axis, so it has no y-intercept. Versus y equals negative 3 would be a horizontal line at y equals, and the y-intercept would be at negative 3 because that's where it crosses at the y-axis. So plugging in 0 for x and getting that y-intercept, so when x is 0, what does y equal? That's where it's going to cross the y-axis. All those points along the um, y-axis are 0 something, like this one is 0, 5 for say, 0, negative 2, 0, 0. So it's whenever x is 0, y-value is your y-intercept. So I also want you to recognize that the pattern is the constant number at the end is the y-intercept. Um, and what I mean by constant is it's the non-variable term, the term without the x. All right, so let's just recap this quick. All right, so putting it all together. So to remember how to find the slope, we want to do the vertical change over the horizontal change. So we find the change in y. So this is going down by 1. And we find the change in x. This is going up by 2 plus 2. And the slope is the change in the y over the change in the x, so negative 1 half. So remember, it's vertical change over horizontal change, so y over x. The y-intercept is where x equals 0, so it would be at 2. All right, in B, if you remember when we um, looked at patterns in equations before, the slope was the number in front of the x. So here we have an x that's the same thing as a 1x. So we have a slope of 1. And then the y-intercept is going to be our constant, which is 8. Looking at a graph, we need to use um, rise over run for slope. Remember, we make that right triangle. So we pick two points that the line crosses. So I pick those two points, make the right triangle. This is going to be down 3, so negative 3, right 1. So slope of negative 3 over 1, or negative 3. Notice it is going downhill, if you think about a little person walking on that line. So your slope does have to be negative there. And then the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, which is this one is at 0. The last one, we can find the slope by finding the change in y. 3 plus 4 is 7. 2 plus 1 is 3. 
So the slope is 4 over 1, or 4. To find the y-intercept, you need to find where the x equals 0. So you have to count backwards in this one. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 15, 11, 7. You're subtracting 4 this way. So 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. So your y-intercept would be negative 5. So next week we're going to put this all together and write uh, equations of lines. Today is the focus is finding that y-intercept or identifying the slope that we reviewed a couple weeks ago now. All right, thanks for watching.